Hi, Javon. Hello. Thanks for agreeing to meet with me today. My name is Camille, as you know. Go ahead and introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about where you work. So my name is Javon Clark. I'm the Operations Director at the Winter Park Y. Awesome. And how long have you been with the Y? Been with the Winter Park Y for four months, but I've been with the Y in general for 20 years. Awesome. So Javon, tell me a little bit about your ethnic background and how you celebrate it. So I'm actually half Jamaican on my father's side, and then on my mother's side, I'm pretty much all North Carolina. Um, I didn't really uh, embrace most of my father's side growing up, so pretty much everything that I learned is straight from North Carolina, whether it's Wilmington, North Carolina, or Lawrenceburg, North Carolina. Um, my family, they moved to New York, and that's where I grew up. So okay. pretty much I've got a lot of, um, history through family reunions, through um, learning about my all my cousins from, you know, whether it's North Carolina, the DMV area, Ohio, pretty much everywhere. But I grew up in New York City, and even though I didn't really, you know, know a lot about my father's side of the family, they always say New York City is a melting pot. So that uh, Jamaican culture was a part of me growing up as well. Um, I happen to have cousins who, you know, who married into that Jamaican side of the family. So I still, you know, I'm really much in touch with that culture. I've been to Jamaica at least six times within my adult life. So okay. I'm pretty much, You're I, familiar. I mean, I'm You're pretty familiar. much familiar with it. Only thing I don't have is the accent, so. Okay, mm -hmm. nice, mm -hmm. nice. So when you think about Black History Month, what does it mean to you? It means a couple of things. Um, first thing is like that time for, I guess, education. And this mm -hmm. education not only for, you know, African Americans, um, not only for youth, but for just everybody in general. To kind of mm -hmm. know the history of not only this country, but the world and what, you know, not only African Americans, but just Africans all across, you know, the diaspora, what they have contributed to, you know, the world. Um, just kind of, getting people to understand, you know, where things have been and where we still need to go. Like for like when I hear I talk about um Black History Month, mm -hmm. you know, that I'll always thing is like it's the shortest month. Like why do we still have to kind of just limit it to that one month? We've definitely heard that before. <laughs> yes. So like why can't this be just a part of everything? Why can't this just be, you know, it doesn't have to be separate. It just has to be a part of, you know, history. You know, it just, we shouldn't have a separate thing. We shouldn't have anything involved, you know, African-American studies when it's all a part of America as well, you know. But it's also, you know, it's also important to be intentional as well because there's some things that, you know, growing up in public schools, you don't learn, you know. I was lucky enough to have some teachers to kind of, you know, go across the system and kind of do, you know, some things that they shouldn't have done to kind of teach myself and a lot of other black kids in my class some things that they would have never known about. Right. Like, I knew about the Tulsa riots when I was in fifth grade, and wow. I know a lot of people didn't even know about that. Absolutely. You know, um, the lift every voice and sing. My elementary school, we sung that every day you know, mm -hmm. in addition to the uh, Star Spangled Banner. But a lot of, you know, schools, a lot of kids don't have that opportunity to kind of be exposed to things like that. So I think when you think about Black History Month, it's like it should be more than just the month. It should be entrenched in everything that is done. It should be a year-round thing. It shouldn't be something separate. So that's what I, I love that perspective. Mm -hmm. So Javon, when you think about your culture, what do you enjoy most? There's so many different layers to it. You know, it's not just, you know, the, um, you can be, let's say, I can find somebody that, you know, may have grown up in New York or grew up in New Jersey or grew up in um, North Carolina or Florida or California, and we all look the same, but we all have a lot of differences. You know, we may have kind of grown up listening to different music, you know. The, the artists, they all look like us, but they all have different types of, you know, dialects, different slang, you know, different ways they dress. Um, from, you know, music, entertainment, um, even food, you know. The, Absolutely. The, like there's so many different things that, it's, it's so much of a, of a variety. And you can, 
um, like I said, you can meet somebody from different places and you can just, everybody has like a different story from what they did growing up and what they was exposed to. And it's just like, it, it, it's, it's just so fascinating just about the fact that people can have, you know, embrace or be, you know, entrenched in like different types of, you know, of, of different facets of their culture. You know, it's not just one thing. And to me, it's like, it, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, it's amazing. I, I speak like specifically, like I, my wife, she grew up in the Virgin Islands mm. and, but her dad and her mother, her dad's from Brooklyn, New York, and her mother's from Philly. So she gets pretty much everything. She grew up in the islands, but right. she's got, you know, she's got that, you know, that street smarts from a Brook, like a, a, from a Brooklyn Absolutely. basketball player, basically. So um, it's just that, that whole, everybody, we can all look the same, but you know, deep down we have, a, we have a different story. We've got different layers to, you know, what our experiences are, what we've been exposed to, and it's just all just, you know, everybody has, you know, a, a story. And that's the, the biggest thing that's kind of that, that I like about it. When you think about those differences and, and the fact that the stories are so different, how do we celebrate it? I think that we, we celebrate it by just, I think the best way is just taking that time to kind of have like conversations like these. Sure. And just encourage people to kind of have to, to, to talk, to kind of just share things, share their experiences, share that, you know, maybe what somebody may have gone through as they are growing up, that's not necessarily what everybody else had to do, you know. Um, I was lucky enough to go, I went to an HBC, so um, going and seeing a lot of different, you know, black people who grew up in different uh, scenarios, different areas, you know, I knew a lot of people, you know, they were the only black kid in their class. Um, I knew some that this is like, they were, this is their legacy, you know, they may have their fathers, uh, uh, mothers, grandmothers, grandfathers that went to the school. Mm. And just getting everybody to, you know, kind of come together and just embracing just their differences but also knowing that they all have that similarity of being African-American, you know, that's just understanding that everybody, we're all here to kind of support each other and go forward. So if someone to approach you who wasn't a black person and wanted to understand black culture, what would you tell them? How much time you got? Because <laughs> it's like, because it's like, it's a, little, it's a little bit more than just having a conversation or, you know, me kind of just going through like my life story or anybody else's life story it's just um a lot of it is you know could be stories but a lot of it is just experiences it's like sometimes it's some things that you know i can't verbalize because it's you know you can't tell somebody or kind of articulate the feeling of mate of kind of being in a um in a situation where you're the only person that looks like you in a room. Um, it's, it, you know, it sounds like something easy to say, but just being in that uh, situation, it's kind of kind of hard to kind of give people that, um, that feeling of, you know, how, how do you feel in that? It, it's, it's, it's tough to kind of explain how to be black or the experiences, because it's, it, you know, it, some days it could be great, you know, some days it could be an advantage. Sometimes it's like, you know. It's a little more complex. It's like, ah, oh, man, it's, you know, I got to deal with this. Or it's like, or even knowing that you got to brace yourself because knowing that, you know, this is something that's, you know, it's a reality important. So when you think about black excellence, what comes to mind for you? What comes to mind is the, um, generations for after me, you know, and like what can I do or what can people around me do to kind of set up the generations after me and going forward to be successful in this work. Mm -hmm. um, I have a child coming up in a couple of months, so my main Congrats. thing, thank you, thank you, my main thing, everything that I'm doing right now, whether it's work, you know, going to the store, any everything is kind of with my child in mind. This is my Definitely. first child. 
And I'm thinking about, you know, when she becomes, you know, an adult and this, how the world is going to be for her to strive. And then, you know, if she wants to have kids and she goes forward, how my grandkids are going to be. And then going there. And I think that from a personal sense, but then I think that, that from like a, um, from a broader perspective. Um, I just left the Wyatt of Atlanta a few months ago, and one of the things that I said to a group of um, youth directors who I left is like, the goal is like when you start, when you're working in a job or like a, a job like the Wyatt, for example, one of your goals is to just, you should have that goal to leave a legacy. Now, you know, it could, like, however that looks to you, that, you know, that it, you know, However that looks to you, so be it, but just have that as that goal. So you're making sure that everything that you do is to work to make your job and the situations that you're in, the people that you interact with, make it better for when that time that is that you have to leave. Now, if that's from a work standpoint, I'm thinking more from a, from a life standpoint, just from a world standpoint. Sure. Um, Education has always been a big thing for me. You know, I went to school to be a teacher, and um, I've always valued that teaching kids from a young age just more than what's in the textbook, you know, and keep reiterating that as they grow, as they grow. So once they get to a certain age and they start to experience life, mm -hmm. not only are they experiencing life, but they remember that they were taught something. So then now they've got that knowledge so they can teach those that's coming after them. So keeping that cycle going in relations to them as African Americans, as teaching their history, teaching what, um, teaching not only their history, but giving each other the tools to survive or succeed going forward. To me, that's excellence, kind of using what was given to you to give back to those that come out. That is wonderful mm -hmm. insight. There's a recurring theme that I hear just as you went through that mm -hmm. whole statement and it was almost in the spirit of each one teach one, mm -hmm. but I also heard legacy and I heard seed. Yes. So when you think about where you are and the things that you've experienced as a black man, who have been the people in your world that have kind of created legacy, have planted seeds, that allow you to operate in the spaces that you do now? I think a lot back to my high school years, and I remember, you know, I grew up going to church in, um, in New York, and we had a pastor that was, like, conveniently only there for four years, and those were those four years that I was in high school. Wow. You know, and, but he was a younger pastor. I think this was the first um, church that he was, um, kind of overseeing, but he was an African-American male and he was younger. And you know, I said before, you know, didn't really have that big of a relationship with my father, but this guy, he kind of showed me that I could, he, he showed me, I guess, the, um, the importance of serving because he not only got, he, he gave me my first opportunity to kind of be a volunteer mm -hmm. and kind of let me know, well, you know, you're not gonna get paid for this, but this is gonna be rewarding. And, you know, I volunteered, you know, teaching some younger kids how to play basketball, things like that. I'm not even a good basketball player, but I'm a good teacher. But um, just getting put in that position and then from there got put in different positions where I was able to um, travel. I went on my first um, cross country flight because of being put into different situations mm -hmm. um, because he kind of recognized that I did have, um, he, he recognized things that I didn't know that I had in me. And like I said, he'd only had been, he only was there for like the four years I was in high school, but that's what I needed at that time, is I needed that, um, that person to kind of just kind of break me out of myself, my shell, because I'm very, very introverted. And like and introverts unite. I understand. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and um, but I never thought that I could, you know, could do things like kind of teach a, a group of kids how to play basketball Definitely. or go in front of, you know, thousands of people and, you know, do a speech on um, professionalism or 
run trainings for you know for the Y or teach classes. A whole bunch of things that I didn't think that I could do, or even just sit in, in an interview room and be you know under uh, in camera and be an interview like this. Sure. Uh, I wouldn't have thought that I could do things like that. But um, he kind of gave me some confidence at that age of being able to do that. Now there's a lot of people since then that has kind of fed into me, but I remember him as being that first person to kind of just, you know. Laid you, that foundation. Yes, yeah, just sign up, hey, you, you can do this. You know, you, you might be, you know, 16 years old, but you can do all this stuff. That's an awesome expression of what it means to, mm -hmm. to experience that black excellence and, and mm -hmm. legacy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So your final thought. What would your final thought be on the beauty of being uh, black? in America? You know, sometimes a lot of people may focus on the negative a lot, but as I said earlier, it's just, like I said, so many different aspects and layers to a culture that, you know, that dates back so many, so, like hundreds and hundreds of years. If, you know, the history, taking time to, you know, look at everything that you know Africans African Americans have done you know throughout years and years and in many countries all across the world that mm -hmm. you know to me it's like yeah it's 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 untapped you know it's like it's never been something that's been a big um, a big focus just in the mainstream just tapping the to the history about what we have done what we contributed to you know to society you know I think you know growing up um, you know playing with my friends I remember you know we used to always play with super soakers going up and you know that was invented by African-American men yeah you know it's like things like that getting people to kind of you know think about you know go deeper into the history deeper into what the um, what we have all have contrib contribu contributed to society, you know, all across the world, you know. And things that we it, use every single day. Every single day. And, um, you know, I know, I mean, I love entertainment, I love, you know, athletics, but we're more than that, you know, and I know that that's the one thing that that's always get pushed forward, but if you take the time to kind of just dig deep, and it starts with education and um, having more, you know, I know that we can get we have a lot more um, of uh, I guess more of an interest and more of a, a push to uh, for African Americans to be teaching, be part of the education system to kind of push you know more knowledge to a lot of our younger um, generations so they can kind of get to understand you know the history. I say history a lot. History major. That's that's my absolutely. That's, you know, it's it's important. They always say you know you gotta you know know where you've been before you know where you're going, and um, that's important. You know, even if you like, it, it's important, but it's not just important for that person, but it's important for the future. And I think just knowing that, like I said before, like building that legacy because it's more than just us. You know, there's, you know, we're only here for a short time, but there's going to be people that's going to be here after us and that's got to go on and, you know, and do great things and we got to kind of give them the tools to do it. So. Love it. Thanks, Javon. No problem. Thank you, Camille.